Hi, I'm Valder Beebe. I'm the host and the visionary of the Valder Beebe Show, God Talk. Some people talk to God and others believe that God talks to them. Join us in conversation with authors, religious clergy, metaphysicians, and regular people like you and I and God Talk. God Talk is a podcast available on FM Radio, Roku TV, and online. Subscribe at ValderBBShow.com. You can also subscribe at YouTube.com slash ValderBBShow. Join the conversation of God Talk. I'll see you there. Good day, and thank you for being here on the Bounder BB Show. My next guest is, you probably know Joe Burlington. You know him from his work. I'm not going to give it away, but I've also got uh, a great opportunity for you to hear his work come alive. I've got Jillian Lauren also, too. She's uh, an award-winning author. I want to thank you guys for being here, for talking about confronting a serial killer. Welcome, Jillian. Welcome, Joe. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Joe, I'm going to let you set the platform because Jillian's story is so riveting. I, yeah. I set the platform for my audience to listen about uh, confronting a serial killer. Yeah, confronting a serial killer is about author Jillian Lauren's uh, uncanny ability to get the serial killer to talk. He was in prison for uh, only a couple of years for some L.A. murders that he denied, for three L.A. murders, but Jillian and uh, LAPD uh, believed he was good for many more killings. That piqued Jillian's attention. Jillian went to go see him and literally got him to start confessing. So along with the FBI and Texas Rangers, Jillian's efforts helped result in identification of victims, uh, some of whom were Jane Doe's, meaning they had no identity, they didn't know who the person was. Um, and some, some of the victims, of course, the families knew who the victim was, but they didn't know how the person was killed. So it's a, just a fascinating story of, of this unrepentant killer that ultimately comes to confess because he felt comfortable confessing to somebody like Jillian, not somebody like <laughs> to Jillian. Uh, and for me, it's a window into how marginalized communities are treated with disrespect in the cr criminal justice system, because most of his victims were from marginalized community, e either people of color or people with uh, drug addiction issues or sex workers. And because the police, some in law enforcement, not everybody, of course, there's a lot of amazing people in law enforcement, so you can't paint everybody with a broad brush, but over the decades, the victims of Sam Little's cases weren't taken as seriously as other victims. Uh, and therefore, this guy, even though he was in and out of law enforcement for much smaller crimes, and he was in the hands of law enforcement, and they suspected he was guilty of worse things, he continually was, was let go. Uh, and that created a four decade killing spree of 93 known victims, which makes him America's most prolific serial killer. And he was allowed to do that because people kind of looked the other way. Jillian, this is told over a five episode series on stars. Uh, the killer, or the, the yeah, the killer is Samuel Little. What what was unique about you that allowed you to get this information that professionals could not get? Well, first of all, I want to give a shout out to some of of these professionals right near you, uh, Texas Ranger James Holland, um, also retired Detective Snow Robertson um, of Odessa, Texas, and. Um, you know, these law enforcement officials acted um, with exceptional ethics and investigation, and there were many more along the way. Um, and, uh, and so I, I don't know that it was anything special about me other than maybe um, I'm a very good listener and uh, I have a strong stomach and I um, was motivated. I was really motivated to to put names to these victims, um, and uh, and 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 I believed that they were out there. So um, you know, 
I don't think it's a magic trick. I just think it was, I wanted it badly enough and I listened. When you hear this kind of stuff filtered through your soul, how do you live with it? I'm working on that right now. <laughs> um, you know, I think it's a lifelong process of healing. And I think that you don't learn to live with it by looking away from it. Um, and I also am somebody who struggled with domestic violence um, and um, violence against women, addiction. Um, and so I, I, I live with it anyway, I guess is the answer. And, um, and that this was a chance to really face down the demons in person. Well, I'm glad you're here to tell the story. Thank you so much for that, Jillian. Joe, I'm going to wrap up with you. This is one of, considered one of the most horrific serial killers that we've ever come up against. But yet there was, maybe I'm missing it, I didn't hear a lot of notoriety about it. I only saw it at the end of it. Why such a low profile for such a killer? Because it was against disenfranchised communities? Absolutely. That's That's kind of the whole point is, you know, we know we know Bundy, we know Gacy, Sam Little. People are just getting to know, uh, and it's because he operated with with near impunity for decades. Uh, there was a lot of uh, victims found on sides of roads and in dumpsters and in places where people dump bodies, but they didn't know who the killer was, and they didn't really care to deeply investigate. I mean, that's. That's the tragedy of this case. If people had paid a little more attention uh, and there was a little more will to solve some of the crimes that he was committing early in his career, you know, literally dozens and dozens and dozens of women's lives uh, would have been spared. There's a saying in the Bible that says, what's done, done in the dark will come to the light. I want to thank you for being a part of the light, you and stars, for bringing this forward so people can be aware, even though Samuel Little has gone on. When do you want us to watch this? Because this is riveting uh, TV. This is worth watching. Yeah, sorry. What your question was? When do we? So watch when are you going to be on Stars? When are you, when are we going to have an opportunity? Oh, to do I think this? it premieres on April eighteenth on Stars. Jillian and Joe, I want to thank you for the work that you've done and will continue to do. And thank you for being here on the Valder BB Show. It's been my pleasure. It's been our pleasure. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you both. I host the Valder Beebe Show, broadcast on radio and television. And this is My Phone Pouch. My Phone Pouch is a great invention. It allows me to go hands-free, pocket-free, purse-free, even belt-free. Head on over to myphonepouch.com.